Hello, welcome to the first video in a series of math videos that I'm doing for senior experience. In this video, we're going to learn how to integrate with z-scores instead of a z-score table. To start off, let's just look at this problem right here. When the original Star Wars movie came out, there was much excitement about the movie. Here are some classic problems that were, okay, well, this is just one problem, but whatever. On the average, it takes Han Solo 45 seconds to check the coordinates and make the jump into hyperspace. The standard deviation on this important task is 5 seconds. When Han and Chewbacca and their passengers are leaving for Alderaan, they make the jump in 33 seconds or less. What is the probability of such an accomplishment? Alright, so for this, first we have to look at our formula for z-scores. Now we know that this is actually z equals x minus mu over sigma. Well, what's the x here? x is going to be your average, right? Well, actually, it's going to be your average this time around. So 33 seconds is your, your, new, your, your time that you're given. Then your average time is your mu, your overall average, is 45 seconds, right? And then the sigma down here is your standard deviation. It just gives us standard deviation is going to be 5 seconds. Now, so we know that z is going to be equal to 33 minus 45 over 5 seconds. All right. Well, that's equal to negative 12 over 5, which is equal to negative 2.4. All right. Now, if we were to look on a z-score table, we could go to the go to the place where it says, you know, on the z-score table they have these kind of these boxes, right? They kind of look like that, and they have these these um these rows with like various decimal points and columns. Sorry, just the columns here and the rows here with various decimal points. And you know you'll go to you'll go to one that says like oh well you know this is for like negative two point three seven seven or something and that's going to be as close as you'll get to where you want it to be where you want two point four so you're never going to have an actual like complete estimate of well not not on it like you're never going to have an actual completely uh, sound real um, mathematically sound guess of what your um, what your z score is going to be. So in order to get a mathematically sound uh, approximation for that, what we should do is we should do it the way that they calculated this z score table in the first place. Now, what's that? How do they do it? Well, let's take a look at the normal curve real quick. So on our normal curve, usually we have oh that's a terrible normal curve. On our normal curve, that's better. Um, you know, here's our x-axis, say, um, and, you know, here is our mu, and then this goes, this curve all the way, it shouldn't be under the x-axis, it should be actually above it, but this goes all the way to negative infinity, and this goes all the way to positive infinity. And what's the curve for this, this normal curve? Like, what is this? y equals curve, this curve actually happens to be equal to a really kind of interesting um, expression, which is y equals 1 over rad 2 pi times e to the negative x squared over 2. Now that looks very strange, but that just happens to be what it is. Now, it turns out that the area under this curve is equal to 1, which is what's necessary for the normal curve. And that's why this weird, this funky equation is used. It's because we needed an equation that had a, the area under it equal to 1. Well, how are we going to find the area? So, well, first of all, we need the area because this area under here is equal to the probability at a certain point, right? If we go up to here, and you may have seen this before, it's on the it's on the table occasionally. Here, say here's our z of 2.4 or well, negative 
and that's that'll be away from the mean by 2.4 standard devi deviations in the negative direction, right? Now, how do we find this area under here in between this z and negative infinity? Because that's what we're looking for. This this area here, let's call it a. This area is equal to your probability p as a function of z, and as you go from negative infinity to infinity, this will become 1 eventually if it encompasses the entire thing, the entire area under the curve. Well, how do we find the area under the curve from negative infinity to some, to some z value, to some x value even, if you want to call it that? Well, if you have taken any calculus courses, you may be familiar with integration, which is denoted with an integral sign like that. With your bounds, you know, a and b, and your function f of x with respect to some kind of variable, say x. And that respect is denoted with a d. So this is dx with respect to x. So this is just an example integral right here where we're integrating from a to b of f of x dx. Now, this seems like a lot, but don't worry, your calculator is going to do it all. So let me erase that really quick. And what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be integrating over this region from negative infinity, because that's where you're going to start from, to your z, right? Well, what's your z? Your z is negative 2.4. And you're doing this, this funky equation, 1 over rad 2 pi e to the negative x squared over 2 dx. Now, if you plug this into a calculator, you'll need, you know, actually, you could probably do this on a TI-84, but it'll help to have an n spire because it's a lot easier to plug stuff in, it'll, and it'll also probably go faster. So this integral is equal to 0 0.008198. And I, I calculated that beforehand. I, I didn't feel like breaking out the n spire to do that. But on the z-score table, it's actually equal to, you know, z-score table. This will tell you it's equal to 0 0.0082. Now, this is obviously more accurate. So why not always use this? Well, it can be easier to just use a z-score table in, in a lot of circumstances. You know, um, it's included with your AP. If you're, taking, if you're taking AP statistics, it's included on the AP in the back of the multiple choice and free response sections. So you don't need to break out your calculator and remember this, this, you know, this, this weird kind of integral thing over here. Um, if you're in calculus, it can be definitely, I guess, more entertaining to do if you're into that sort of thing. But it'll, it's definitely more accurate than the z-score table. And overall, I think, I think it's, it's kind of your choice, whether you want to use the z-score table or not, whether you know calculus or not. Um, but, you know, it's all up to you. Anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.